welcome students to lecture number 3 of electrochemistry today we are going to study about emf of a cell before we go to the main part i want to brush up some topic which we had done earlier you remember we had studied the galvanic cell that is the Daniel cell we had studied we had zinc sulfate solution in which we had dipped a zinc electrode we have a copper electrode dipped in copper sulfate solution the zinc electrode was connected to the negative terminal of the potentiometer the copper electrode was connected to the positive terminal of the potentiometer at the zinc electrode oxidation takes place and at the copper electrode reduction takes place where oxidation takes place is the anode and where reduction takes place is the cathode so we have zinc as a anode and copper as a cathode when oxidation takes place zinc passes into solution as zinc ions and two electrons will be given out these two electrons will then be traveling in the external circuit in this direction and they will move uh, towards the cathode so at the cathode the reaction that takes place is copper ions from the solution will pick up the two electrons and will give you copper in the reduced state so the copper ions which are present in the solution they move on to the electrode and they pick up the two electrons and they, the copper which is formed gets deposited on the surface of the electrode so this too before that what I have missed out is this is connected by the salt bridge so here you connect the potentiometer you can connect the potentiometer or you can connect the um, a bulb it will glow so this is the Daniel cell that we had studied so what I want to remind you is electrons are given out when oxidation takes place at the zinc electrodes these electrons move or they are pushed towards the cathode and they move towards the cathode now when we talk about EMF of a cell the electrons are released at the anode the anode pushes the electrons to the external circuit by electrical repulsion the cathode gets posit uh, positive charge due to the discharge of the positive ions when I say discharge of the positive ions it is nothing but the copper ions at the cathode they take up the two electrons and it is converted into copper so this copper ions get discharged okay discharge of the positive ions on it that is it uh, it gives the charge to the electrode and gets converted into copper so cathode gets the positive charge due to the discharge of positive ions on it electrons are attracted electrons are attracted to this electrode so there is a push of the electrode electrons at the anode and attraction of electrons at the cathode means there is a driving force that sends the electrons to the circuit 
Now this driving force is called the electromotive force ENF. EMF of the cell or it is called as the cell potential. It is measured in volts and it is also referred to as the cell voltage. Now how do we measure the EMF of the cell? You can see this diagram here. Uh, the method that we are going to use is called as Bogendorf's compensation method. So in this Bogendorf's compensation method, we have a wire PQ. It's a uniform thin wire. And we have X, which is the standard cell. Sorry. We have PQ, which is a wire on which we will move the jerky then we have x which is the working cell and we have s which is the standard cell and we have this is a two-way key here we'll put it as k k is the two-way key which is used to connect either the working cell or the standard cell into the circuit. We have the we have G which is the galvanometer and um, and uh, we have the jerky that is uh, which moves on this wire. Uh, PQ. So let us see how it works. We have PQ is a long wire of high resistance. As I have made some changes, let me make the changes here. We have said that this is K, it's a double way key. It's a mistake here. So we have PQ is a long wire of high resistance and uniform diameter. Then B represents, this B represents the battery uh, which is joined across PQ having constant and higher EMF. The battery will have a constant EMF, it will not change and the EMF will be higher than that of the working cell, this is the working cell here. X is the cell, the EMF of which it is to be determined is called as the working cell. So you have to determine the um, EMF of this particular cell using this Bogendorf's compensation method. Then we have S is the standard cell. Here you can see S which is our standard cell of which uh, the EMF remains constant over a considerable period of time. It will not change. Then we have uh, K. This we have changed as K. K is a two-way key. This K is a two-way key uh, by which either you put the cell in the circuit or you put the uh, this cell, the working cell in the circuit or you put the standard cell in the circuit to the galvanometer G to a sliding contact. The sliding contact uh, which is made by the jerky at Cx and at Cs. The contact point Cx and Cs or CS is adjusted to a null that is no current flows to the galvanometer. So what happens here is first, first you will put the working cell in the circuit. So how it works is first what you will do is you put the Put the working cell in the circuit.
so uh, it is this x is connected into the circuit to the two way key and we have the galvanometer and with this jerky when it is when it moves on this wire ab you will at at one particular point you will get a null point on the galvanometer means what galvanometer will show a reading zero okay the reading shown on the galvanometer will be zero so what will happen is um, when you slide on this wire pq at this point when it moves at this uh, which is at this point the current to the galvanometer will be zero the current to the galvanometer will be zero then you measure that distance that distance is say pcx measure after that you will measure distance uh, P C X. Then, then what you will do is now you put the other uh, standard cell in the put the standard cell in the circuit. Means you connect the standard cell now. Now you remove the working cell and you connect the standard cell. So this standard cell here is put into the circuit. So we have uh, again you take the jerky and you move it on the wire PQ and you uh, see at which point there is, an, uh, there is no current passing to the galvanometer. Say at this particular point say CS uh, there is no current flowing to the galvanometer. So then you measure then you measure the distance. P C S. So, how do we get this particular equation? So, we have uh, when the working cell was put into the circuit, say the EMF is EX. That EMF is said to be directly proportional to the length or the distance that you have measured, length PCX. And the EMF, when the standard cell was put into the circuit, is directly proportional to the length PCS. So you uh, take the ratios. If you take the ratio EX upon ES is equal to length, I'll write length PCX upon length PCS. Okay, so using this formula, you can get EX is equal to ES into length of PCX upon length of PC. S. So using this equation you can find out the EMF of the working cell where EX is the EMF of the working, working cell and ES is the EMF of the standard cell. So using this equation here, you can find out the EMF of the working cell. The standard cell which is used uh, for EMF measurement is the normal Western standard cell represented below. So we have 12.5% of cadmium in mercury that is the cadmium amalgam 12.5% uh, of cadmium and the remaining will be mercury so it forms an amalgam uh, it is uh, in contact with uh, cadmium sulfate 8 by 3 water molecules that is water of crystallization it is a solid here so these are crystals of cadmium sulfate 
uh, which are in contact with this uh, mercury, this cadmium amalgam. And then here we have another bar. This bar means they are in contact. So this is in contact with the saturated, solu uh, saturated cadmium sulfate solution. Uh, which is in contact with Hg2SO4 that is a salt of mercury Hg2SO4 which is a solid and which is in contact with mercury which is in contact with mercury so we have this is not there so we have um, cadmium amalgam we have the crystals above that we have the crystals of cadmium sulfate and it is filled with a solution of cadmium sulfate and uh, so this is a negative electrode and uh, this is a electrolyte cadmium sulfate the other side we have the positive electrodes from mercury in contact with Hg2SO4 what I want you to remember is the EMF of the cell. The EMF of the cell is 1.014636 volts at 298 degree Kelvin and this EMF does not change uh, with time. For a long time this EMF will remain constant otherwise usually what happens with polarization effect. Uh, the EMF of the cell goes on decreasing but this cell that is why it is used as a standard cell it looks like this we have the cadmium amalgam in contact with cadmium sulfate salt that is a solid here and it uh, this H sh uh, shaped tube is filled with cadmium sulfate solution and the other side we have mercury and above mercury we have a solid Hg2SO4. So this is the diagram of the western standard cell.